Okay, cool. Nice. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first ever Antonio Talks YouTube show with guests, not me just ranting on. Um, also, that we're going to be putting this as a podcast. We haven't really worked out the distribution strategy yet, so you could say that this is somewhat of a pilot for a show. But I'm really honoured to have a person who sit next to me, a person who sits next to me, rather, all day, and now he's just sitting opposite a table. Ian Horrocks, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing, Ian? Woo! Yeah, good. 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 Thanks really very good. much for being my first ever uh, interviewee, I suppose. Um, Ian, so I just want you to give the people out there a bit of an insight into yourself, who you are first, and then we can go in and talk about LinkedIn and all the wonderments that LinkedIn oh, holds. Wait to talk about LinkedIn. Yes. Um, thank God I get to talk about myself first. Uh, so, yeah, um, I am an ex-journalist, um, still sometime freelance journalist, but now I work in the kind of HR and uh, tech spaces. I help companies use social media to improve uh, their recruitment strategies. Um, that's, that's kind of about it. Um, I obviously, you're quite well acquainted with me. Yeah. Uh, me and Antonio went to university together, um, studied on separate courses, uh, found ourselves together. I know. Does that sound a bit too close? No, I think we're. Um, I think we 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 are close, but um, you know we've been on the same journey, haven't we? So yeah. Well, I mean, we've been setting up businesses off and on for a while. Yeah, that's right. Um, and yeah, this is definitely the best one we set up so far. Well, I think so because we're actually making money. We're actually making money now. <laughs> exactly. That. <laughs> that I think that's the uh, that determines a, a good business. Awesome. Thanks, Ian. So, uh, Ian, let's talk about LinkedIn because we're always talking about LinkedIn. I think obviously our job. Too much. Too our much. job. I think we need to stop talking about LinkedIn yeah. so much. Our job is to understand, I guess, what's happening on each social channels. But I find LinkedIn very interesting um, purely from a personal brand point of view. I mean, obviously, I'm active on there. Um, but from a business and a personal brand point of view, I want to talk about LinkedIn because it's getting, it's becoming this sort of place that, you know, it's a very interesting to watch how people are seeing other people's posts, how people are um, not understanding that what people like myself are doing online, which is... Well, it's, it's just all a bit aggressive. What do you mean? Well, it, this, it, it seems to be, to be, I know this, you could say this about most social media platforms, but the default reaction seems to be like people just want to be triggered mm. and I know there's this whole thing about my generation your generation the millennials being you know these kind of soft wet around the ears liberals but it feels to me like most of the people who are getting triggered on like day and on you know millennials they're kind of older people it's just strange older people what do you mean by that Ian older people you know people pushing <laughs> <laughs> So, I, obviously, like I, I, I'm not saying it's a, it's a thing that old people are at fault for because they're old. Mm. It's just that seems to be what it is on LinkedIn. I don't know if it's because there's not that many young people on LinkedIn. Um, I don't think it is. It, it, but it, anyways, discounting the age demographics, there is a very kind of intense, aggressive atmosphere on mm. LinkedIn. Yeah. That kind of is, it, it's kind of, it's very emotional, just rather than rational. So let's take that. Let's take that for a second, because I think yeah, that's really interesting. Let's take that. So, in comparison to other channels, you know, how does that fare? So, let's say in comparison to um, what an, another professional. Uh, so no, no, Twitter. I mean, let's say Twitter, so Facebook, in Insta, in whatever. In comparison to Twitter. So on Twitter, I, I think the kind of the default reaction if I'm reading any post on Twitter, or most of the people who are on Twitter when they read a post, is oh my God, is this thing going to be interesting to me? Is this going to be something that I can use to, um, you know, to learn more about the world or something that I can add my own opinion to? And, you know, it's, it, it, there is kind of a, a basic optimistic attitude mm. to the basic... To content. User, to the average yeah. Twitter yeah, yeah. Um, You're kind of expecting it to be good. Whereas, contrast that to LinkedIn, where it seems like people are expecting it to be bad, maybe even wanting yeah. it to be bad. You know, it's a little bit... Of, uh, I know they just take. They just take into. Uh, they take. Po they take things how they want to take them. So I'm. I'm. I, I'm always prodding the beehive, and we'll get to that in a bit because we, we always talk. We like to talk about prodding the beehive, but I will find that you know some of the posts that I put out, people you could clearly have not read them. They clearly haven't read to the end, and they clearly don't. Um, 
I guess they clearly don't want to read to the end. They just see one thing that triggers them because they're triggered and they're starting to well, see well, red. Why don't they want to read to the end? Because we're all making our own assumptions, right? We're all making our own um, perceptions of people. And people already have a perception of me anyway. So that's fine. That's okay. But I find that people don't really want to read to the end. They just want to make their own conclusion on something, particularly in the professional world, because the professional world is... Um, it's full of ego, right? You know, you can go into a boardroom and it's full of ego. You go into a company, everyone wants to be right. Everyone wants to make sure that no one's as as good as they are, or they're or they're. Super, what's the opposite of a superior? An inferior? You know, what, my 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 staff aren't better than me, so they hold people back. You know, this this happens commonly. People won't admit it, it you, but the point is, and let me, let me finish. The point is, people won't admit that they want to hold people back, but they actually do. Or alternatively, their ego's out on LinkedIn and everyone thinks they're right. And that's cool, like, I, 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 because it creates great conversation. But one thing I want to know is why is it that LinkedIn is such a hostile place at the moment? Because it really is, that's a great term for it, hostile. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think at the moment, the reason it's a hostile place is because people have realized it's a hostile place. People have, people, so, marketers, of which we are both of that demographic, realized uh, maybe about a year, 18 months ago, that LinkedIn was this kind of massive platform mm. full of potential people who could enlist their services and all of their data is there. And they thought, hey, there's, there aren't many marketers on LinkedIn or the people who are marketing on LinkedIn don't really know how to do it. So these kind of like real professional marketers then started looking at LinkedIn and thinking, all right, how can I use this? How can I kind of get to the top of the algorithm? Mm. Um, and they looked at it and they said, this is a really hostile place. Or this has the beginnings of being a really hostile place, you know? Yeah. It's these kind of default reactions. So I'm going to make posts that make people angry. You know, how, how, how can I promote myself on a platform that favors posts that make people angry. Yeah. I'm gonna make people angry. So they saw that there was this kind of already kind of fostering atmosphere and then they've kind of tapped into it. So maybe, maybe I need to come back a little bit and explain why um, making you know, someone angry could make your post do mm. better. When I say do better, I mean get to the top of the algorithm. I mean seen, be seen by more people get more reach, mm. get more engagements. The more people you're seen by, the more chance that your message gets out there, the more well known your name is. Mm. Um, so, okay, a really important part of that is comments. LinkedIn notices how many comments, how many likes and stuff your post is getting. If you're getting more likes and comments, then it's gonna show your post to more people, as, yeah. you, as you well know. Um, so, if the default reaction in LinkedIn is to kind of be this kind of hostile place where I'm gonna be angry at something, and I'm gonna be angry about it, I'm gonna display my anger mm. in a comment. What is the marketer gonna do? They're gonna write posts that trigger anger, and mm. yet still obviously don't cross the Rubicon and don't kind of completely contrast with their brand values, don't yeah. completely wreck their brand, and you know, all that kind of stuff. But they're, they're gonna play in this kind of uh, liminal zone in between, you know, neutrality and triggering that forces people to not forces that kind of incites people to comment yeah and i think that's why it's become so much more prominent recently as opposed before you saw it sometimes now you see it all the time mm. because people have clicked on and there's loads of people who don't realize they're being triggered mm. they yeah they, you know i mean and I, I we well, i get that and obviously we talk about this all the time but let's let's um let's talk about that as well so we, we know this whole professional this isn't facebook type of thing do you think linkedin's becoming facebook do you think it's becoming you know like something where i'd be able to see my mum post that she's just done a bathroom up mm. you know what 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 this, what, what this, is this, this terminology like a, a really stereotypical politician's answer but I don't think that's the right question to ask. <laughs> like, I, I don't think the right question to ask is, is LinkedIn becoming Facebook? Um, it, it, it's not That is the question though, so it, you've got to answer. But it's not helpful in terms of determining what, what is the answer that you want from that question? The answer that you want from that question is, you know, you know, the question that you're really asking is, is LinkedIn becoming more informal? 
is LinkedIn trying to get some of Facebook's users? Okay, if that's the question no. I'm asking, that's well, that's but, that's but exactly it's, it's it. Not, it's not. It's just that it's just the fact that people on LinkedIn are becoming more comfortable with with sharing greater range of things because they know it's getting traction. And that's just what's happening. If mm. if LinkedIn was to stop that happening in future, they might, you know, kind of uh, disincentivize that in terms of the posts that get high up the algorithm. But nothing's really happened in that regard yet. So, so I think um, I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think LinkedIn's becoming Facebook. I think uh, you know people are be- becoming more comfortable with sharing an opinion online. You know. Whereas, like three years ago, two, four years ago, people were quite conscious of what other people thought of them, and it's because we this social media is still quite new. I mean, right now we're still ten yards into a ten thousand yard race, right? Mm-hmm. So this whole um, communicating online, um, I guess, notion was: am I going to say the wrong thing? We're not. We we corporate companies weren't used to um, putting authentic information out. It was always gone through a PR um, officer or a PR office. And now, you know, everyone can put out information. Your company, it, you know, everyone who works for your company has the outlet to just go, I'm at work right now. And, you know, that could either go in two ways. You know, I'm at work right now slacking off or I'm at, or, you know, someone who's really opinionated like we saw with Google um, recently, the document, what was the document? The Google document from Nat Giza who, uh, the, the, guy who, the guy who didn't believe in their uh, policies around gender. gender. That's it. So that went the absolute opposite way, didn't it? So this actually brings up an even interest, more interesting conversation around, well, if people have access to social media now, you know, how are companies going to mitigate this? Because, you know, I wouldn't want any, any of my employees, uh, you know, any, anyone who worked for us, you know, we're, we're about making sure that everyone has the same values as our clients do, as everyone else does, you know, respects each other. Any of those stuff, any of that stuff that come out, you know, it'd be quite a uh, interesting, interesting thing, but I wouldn't want any of that. But at the same time, you can't eliminate freedom of speech. So how are we going to mitigate against that? Big question. It's a fucking big question. I think think, um, a lot of people are asking themselves this because, I mean, you, you have to face up to the reality, isn't it? Like, Social media isn't going anywhere, obviously. It's actually really in its infancy in terms of how it's going to impact society. Um, so people are always going to have access to that. There's no way that you can stop them. The kind of the genies out of the ball. Um, you can't, you know, which kind of psychopathic boss is going to go around and tell their workers not to bring their personal phones into work and stuff like that. You know? mm. I get it. In some, some cases, maybe governments, etc., might be appropriate. But most I've cases, heard it happen in most, recruitment. Most cases, because it's, it, the, the kind of war for um, talent is so big um, and so intense, you, you know, you can't afford to do that kind of stuff because the best talent will just leave you. Um, so you've got to take the risk mm. of kind of giving your employees the freedom. So the, the, the focus moves more towards, all right, how can I improve my company culture? How can I improve the way that my company works? How can I improve improve my employer value propositions so that most of the people who work me have a kind of net positive opinion of me as a company? Um, I mean, you you already have places like Glassdoor, etc., where employees are sharing in lots of information about whether a company is a good place to work or not. You know, they can do that across any social media, mm. um, and you can't stop that. Or in by banning the platforms or telling people to not be on the platforms you, know? mm. you want people to be on the platforms because you want them to be banging your drum mm. you want them to be a kind of advocate of you as an organization whether for consumers or for future employees um so the focus all has to go back towards you taking hr more seriously and being all right okay you know how can we create a really good working environment that everyone is happy and kind of can authentically demonstrate it just in the normal way that they post about their friends. Yeah, you know, no, like, like, like you post out a night out with your mates, you know. If you have mates, I don't have uh, mates, Ian. 
I told you this many times, right? I work all the time. I don't have friends. You're my only friend, Ian. Oh, God. Yeah. So much pressure. There's so much pressure. <laughs> so, actually, let's talk about prodding the beehive. I really love this whole sentiment. Now, everyone who is, you know, in my... Um, I mean, well, everyone who's in my, obviously everyone in this company, everyone who's in my network will see constant posts going out. Sometimes they're way too far over the line. You know, sometimes they're, you know, quite neutral. Some, but m majority of the time, what I'm trying to do is prod my own beehive. So essentially my network is a beehive, right? And what I'm trying to do is prod it and create and, and antagonize people in many ways with a sentiment that is all about I guess something that we're all, tr we're all we're all thinking about, we're all wondering. It's all on our minds, but we'll create a lot of conversation. And everyone will say, "Well, why are you putting this post out? Because you, you or or this post is only designed to you've only put this post out because you want to get attention or you want to get a conversation started." That's absolutely true. That's all I'm trying to do. So why is it that we can easily prod a beehive like LinkedIn? So it's really weird, actually. I, I was watching this documentary last night. And it was about swarms. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. It was just about loads and loads of different types of swarms. So like locust swarms and uh, shoals of fish, etc. Why animals swarm. Um, and it's this kind of one crazy old guy. And he just loves swarms. Swarms is like his favorite topic. Um, and it's kind of uh, infectious. You just you start you start loving swarms as well, and he, he does all these kind of experiments on himself. And one of them is with a, a beehive, um, or a kind of you know a group of bees. And basically, bees they enter this special phase of being bees when just before they find their hive, and they're all kind of covering around the queen bee and protecting her. When they're in this place. They aren't aggressive at all, so they yeah. can't hurt you. So you can literally put your hand into this kind of group of bees and you can pick them all up and you mm. can get them to all fly around you. You can even get them to all just kind of be completely on you and they won't sting you at all. You won't get one sting. You could have a million bees on you. You wouldn't get a sting because they're in this special stage mm. where they aren't aggressive at all. And I, I think that's what it's like on LinkedIn. Like, <laughs> nothing can hurt you. But, I mean, not really, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's, it, if, if you take the mindset that, all right, I'm just, um, you know, trying to get, that's my, my goal is to get attention, to grow my network mm. so I can sell more, whatever. Mm. Every single comment that you get is potentially, it's a bee that's sitting on your arm. It could mm. sting you, but it's not stinging mm. you because it's in the LinkedIn stage. Mm. I don't know I don't know if that's a perfect example. No, I think it, it, it's, it's definitely well, leading it, on. Because <laughs> the thing is, you think about, um, and we t again, we t you know we don't we, we're not just talking about this just for this show. We talk we talk about this all the time, and the funny thing is, is you know yesterday I had someone who said I'm sick of seeing posts like this, and I said I literally commented back saying, well if you're sick of seeing posts like this, just don't comment on them because the LinkedIn algorithm doesn't know that you're sick of it. It just knows that you've commented on it, which it thinks that you want to see more of this shit, and uh, but that's the point, right? Nothing. By the really way, guys, we're you. trying to make the LinkedIn algorithm interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know if we're succeeding, but I think we are. I think we're, we're, we're definitely we're definitely succeeding. So, um, so commenting on something it means that you're going to see more of the same more of the same stuff, and that's that's right. So, when someone comments on it, rather than having my beehive just seeing it, it's their beehive then sees it, mm -hmm. which which then creates that sort of critical mass. So yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, every time an angry person comments on a post because they don't want to see that post. Mm they are effectively sharing that post with their network. Why are you doing that? Why, why, I mean, maybe you don't understand, but understand it. Or, yeah. or don't understand it, I don't know. I think, well, we can't exploit it. what we're trying to, yeah, exactly. What we're trying to do is, I guess, highlight that, the fact that if you comment on something, you're going to see more of that all the time. You're going to, if you comment, if you don't want to see my post, do not comment on my post or like them, even if you hate them. In it, fact, just unfollow it. Just, 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 Stop yeah, just disconnect it. with me because. Oh, wait, that isn't the point of this, that we get you more followers. Not oh, yeah, the, of course it is. Yeah. Um, so that brings you on. So I think we're, 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 we're going around the houses a little bit, but I think, why are we, why are we so touchy on LinkedIn? Because I, I see it as like, just a game and now I sort of um, and now that's what if you see it as a game and you don't take it personally then you're able to actually gain traction on LinkedIn and win business from it mm -hmm. but why are we so touchy on LinkedIn why is everyone so you know it needs to be a certain way do you think it's because we're, we're still on the pangs of an old-school professional work environment 
where you know you had to come to work in a suit and you know you do you you you, you do what the boss tells you yeah i mean again i don't want to get caught up in these kind of like generation culture wars but, but i think it, but we, I, we need to we need to talk it's not generation culture war i mean because i i know 60 i know 50 60 year olds who are you know, creating great cultures, but it's not, it's not that. It, it's a corporate war, I think. There's, it's between corporate and now the startup sort of lean, agile environment. So actually, it's not an age thing. So I think, but I think we're definitely you stuck know, in the pangs of a society. I, 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 sorry, I didn't mean age thing, but I mean, I mean more like a generation thing. So society has completely changed in so many ways, as you'd expect. You know, human race, we develop really fast. We completely change how we travel how we eat mm. how we perceive other people every like 10 years you know what i mean so that that's going to happen um and i i think the world now is so drastically different from when from when other people started work at a certain different time and and, and so working culture has completely changed to match that so it's it's, it's not that the the older generation is not with it so to speak it's that the older working culture still persists because lots of people had lots of success mm. with a completely different set of values with a, a completely s different set of understanding how you onboard an employee mm. you know some yeah. people get triggered when when people post um photos when they've just started their first day and they've got loads of loot mm. that's branded loot and then other people comment they're like oh this is uh, mm. what a waste it's everything you can imagine about the working experience was completely different and succeeded by being completely different. Mm. Now it's succeeding by being how it is now. Yeah. Um, I'm not to say that any one of those orthodoxies is right, but, you know, obviously one is more suited towards the current moment and the mm. current set of technologies. That's... I, think, I don't know if that makes sense. No, I, I, it, well, it's honest, nothing's really here to make sense. It's just here to <laughs> have conversation, but, but, right? I think that's why it's an angry place, because you have this war between one group of people who are saying, this is how work... Or not even one, there's lots of different groups. This is how work works. Mm. This is what worked for me. Yeah. And then you've got another group of people who say, this is what works for me. I mean, let's, take it, let's just works. take this what prime example at the moment, right now. We're sitting here, having a, we're working right now, we're having a beer, when we, we're, we're doing a talk show, we're in our office, we kicked all our employees out so we could do this. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is, is that would, you know, if whatever way this is being taken online or whatever, whatever way people think of this, this isn't stopping us from doing our job. You know, this is actually creating a better culture for us to, to actually do our job, you know. And, and why is it that these WeWork offices are springing up everywhere and they're being widely adopted? I think there's, there's, there's something to be said around an agile, not workforce, but an agile environment, just, you know, just real lean, but at the same time, really fun. You know, it's not actually, um, it's not stuffy, all all false pretenses. What you see is what yeah, you get. I mean, we, we would say that because it's us, isn't it? But <laughs> no, but I think, yeah, but at the same time, you look at, you know, I worked for Accenture, you know, going to these, these, these big corporate companies, these big consulting firms, everyone's trying to be small now. They're all trying to be a startup type mentality. And so maybe that's a similar thing. Maybe this whole, the, we, are, we are getting over the pangs of a, a, a sort of a, a way work should have, work was for ages as well. It was ages, you know, you'd go to work in a suit. You know, for someone, if someone turned up in a suit to an interview with me right now, I'm the CEO of the recruited, if someone turned up in the suit, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't think it's anything bad. I'd just be very taken aback by it. I'd be like, wow. Our cameraman is currently wearing a suit. Yeah, he so. actually is currently <laughs> wearing a suit. He's got a date tonight. It's Valentine's Day, you see. Um, great. So let's talk about... I, I, I think, I think there's, there's a good jump off point from that, actually, because I think you, you see these same conflicts playing off inside of LinkedIn. Um, so obviously, the people inside of LinkedIn are the people who control what happens on LinkedIn. I mean, they're, obviously they're at the mercy of their users and how they use the platform, but they can control and direct users in ter terms of how they want to use the platform. Yeah. And it feels to me like at the minute, there is a big kind of internal war or a, uh, I, I, I don't know, the, the, there's some kind of fight over what they want LinkedIn to be. And they don't, ever since Microsoft bought it, mm. When was that? Maybe about a year ago, year, two year years and, ago? Yeah, a year and a half ago. Um, they, they seem to have completely changed in a different direction. And yeah, they're, they're trying to be more kind of 
modern, but at the same time, they're penalising lots of people. Like lots of people mm. being banned. Lots of famous recruiters have been banned. Yeah. Um, famous recruiters aren't famous, but you know, you know yeah. what I mean. In, to me and you. Um, um, so so it's, it's really interesting. Like I, I don't know, I, I don't know what's going on at LinkedIn at the minute. Like internally. Well, I mean, to be honest, what's going on internally at LinkedIn isn't really our issue. Our issue, what we like to do is game the platform as we do to any social channel, which is... Um, but I think that I, my theory behind that would be, this has always been my theory, is that they have put corporate structure into a, an organisation that is that is meant to be um, modern. And you can't put corporate structure. That's why it takes too long for them to do everything. Everything seems a bit siloed. You know, they've only just released video. You know, in the past six months, video. You know, video. YouTube came around ten years ago, <laughs> so it, th they should have released it six months after YouTube came out. You know, right. So I want to I want to continue here in this vein because you know the let's talk about these people who've been, or well, we don't know if they've been banned, but let's talk about the people we don't see anymore, but we used to see a lot. Oleg. Oleg. Hold tight, Oleg. <laughs> Hold tight, Oleg. Love the geezer. I heard that he... Um, I, someone told me that he's not, he, real, he's, he's, not he's not real. Someone said that they've never not, they've never met him. It's just sort of like, Oleg, if you're real, could you um, please just give us a shout out? Yeah, please call in. Yeah. I, I know you're watching. <laughs> well, call in. You can't call in because we're, we're, not li we're not live. Uh, well, we're Basically, live right now, but... What, what we're going to infer, if you don't call in, we're going to say that you're not real. Exactly. Obviously, everyone watches the show. So. Oleg, 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 Oleg. Absolute inspiration to men. For those of um, you who don't know, Oleg is apparently the chief technology officer at Daily Mail. The Daily Mail. Yeah. Um, and he kind of invented. He created this. He created. He's, he, he created a counterculture. He did. Yeah. He, he invented <laughs> on LinkedIn a, a format of posting that bit, kind of just took off and went yeah. crazy. Um, and all he did, his like main innovation. By the way, guys, if you ever want to, you know, try and work out social media. A really good rule, basic rule to understand is that you don't need to change much. You just need to change one thing, do one thing slightly differently. Yeah. And it'll work. Oleg worked out that on mobile, um, obviously most people are lucky at LinkedIn and most social platforms on mobile, your posts look a lot better and they read a lot better if you insert a page break about every six to ten words. Yeah. Um, and so you just kind of created this post format that had constant page breaks all the way through. and. Yeah, this doesn't sound like anything, but he was then straight away, you know, like 20,000 likes. But this is what I'm saying. Crazy I think, like, you know, a CTO, he's, he's, a, he's more of like, he should be the CMO of Daily Mail, the chief marketing officer, rather than the chief technology officer, because he, he has absolutely scaled a brand by just doing that. And, um, I mean, do you think he's real? Do you actually think he's real? Because... I want him to be real. Yeah, I mean, he's an <laughs> enigma to me. And so whatever... <laughs> Whatever you think of um, Oleg, whatever you think of him, you know, if you don't, if you like him, if you don't like him, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, the fact of the matter is, he is amazing at gaining attention. And if we're in a sales game, which pretty much everyone is, you know, we're all trying to sell something, you know, he is a prime example of how you can just take a format and exhaust it, you know, to hell and probably win a lot of business from it and actually we take it we reverse that back to you know me just copying Oleg's post which really I did copy not his content but his the style of post and created it in my own format you know that it's one business for me so actually Oleg's a god he's an absolute god mm. yeah I mean he's uh, but he, he's a god he's no longer with us yeah where is he he's gone yeah but so, so yeah so the, I don't know if you're just conspiracy very theorizing here um or if actually oleg has been shadow banned from uh linkedin and if you for those of you who don't know what a shadow ban is uh ian could you tell them so a, a shadow ban is effectively when the social media platform that you're posting on uh if that social media platform doesn't like what you're doing but it also is a little bit scared of telling you that it doesn't like d you doing it. It will, rather than ban you or try and stop, talk to you and ask you to stop that behaviour, it will shadow ban you. So it will just say, well, it won't say anything. It'll, your post will just stop showing in different people's feeds. So I never followed Oleg. This is a quite, quite an important thing to note. Like, you know, I, the Daily Mail is not really my kind of paper. Oleg is not really my kind of guy. 
Um, I never followed this guy. I, I never, you know, suck him out, sort him out. Suck him out? Where does that come from, Ian? Oh this, is a, this is a family show, Ian. I might be a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Getting hassed. Um, yeah, this never, is a family show, Ian. I never... I never... <laughs> I, I never sought the guy out, um, but he was always in my feet. <laughs> Everything from now on is just going to be like terrible euphemism. Can we stop talking about Oleg? <laughs> Someone has got a thing for Oleg. Oh, wow. It's, it's what a great day, first show. Exactly, yeah. And to be fair, you know, I don't know if this means anything, but Ian's um, you know, other half is across the globe, so there are probably some thoughts going through his head. Whoa. Um, yeah, anyways, so basically, I never followed the guy, but his posts always showed up in my feed. Um, so that's mental, like, why is that happening? That's just, mm. you know, the nature of LinkedIn's algorithm. If a post gets loads of comments, loads of engagement, then it's going to be shown in people's feeds who aren't necessarily following that person. Um, but I don't see those posts anymore. No, I, I haven't um, seen, to be honest, I haven't seen an Oleg post for quite some time. So, so we think that it's been it's because he's been shadow banned, or maybe he hasn't. Maybe they've actually just told him like, Oleg, you need to stop it. You, you're destroying LinkedIn. Yeah, but why would he do that? Why would he do that? Why would he stop? Like, you know, I think also what well, no, because no, they say to him, look, stop, or we'll stop your profile. I don't know. Yeah, but I think also I mean, we're, who we're are LinkedIn? Who, by yeah, by the way, we're no completely idea. speculating. But also, who are LinkedIn to to? Because I know they have banned people. You know, there's people in my network who they have banned, and like, who are LinkedIn to dictate this? Obviously, they run the platform, but isn't that quite um, Orwellian in many, many, much, many regards? Because they're basically saying, "Well, come here, be active on our platform, but don't be too active that you're um, offending other people." So we're going to censor what's going on. I mean, yeah. isn't, that, isn't that really bad? Like, isn't that actually against what, what I, democracy well, is? Well, no, I, I think I know you're not the most sympathetic person to LinkedIn, <laughs> and I shouldn't be either, since I'm technically a competitor. Um, uh, but, so, they, they built this algorithm, yeah? And any, any social media platform that's kind of the integral part of it is the algorithm. Um, that determines what posts get seen, what posts mm. don't get seen. When you build that algorithm, there are so many you know, uh, potentials for how it could end up. There's a, just a kind of infinity of choices mm. of different ways that that algorithm could be used to get content promoted. Um, you've got no idea when you code that algorithm what's going to happen. So you just do it the best way that you think you can. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not a coder, so any coders, shout out. Um, but in, in my eyes, if you're designing it, you know, you, you just kind of the best fit, you can't foresee all of the ways that people use the platform. They then saw that people were using the platform in this way and it wasn't perhaps in the way that they wanted. It, to them, perhaps they thought it wasn't very authentic. They mm. thought that users were being tricked into only seeing a certain kind of post. Well, there was a lot of plagiarism as well, wasn't there? I mean, there's loads of plagiarism as well. I mean, it, it was a really fun experiment you could do about six months ago where you just copy any viral post like command C and then command V it into LinkedIn's search bar yeah. and you see the same post posted by like 30 different people um, so there, yeah, there's, there's lo lots of that going on and you know if, if one person is constantly dominating the algorithm it ceases to be a mass social network and it becomes one person's promotional tool oh LinkedIn which, which you know oh, oh LinkedIn <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn um, so I, I think that's probably why they why they've been penalising him and, and other people yeah of course that's a great that's a great actually um, I guess answer to that Oleg, if you have been, uh, if you're real, first of all, and if you have, if you feel like you have been penalised, I'd love to get you on the show to speak to you too, um, because I want to know. Uh, first of all, you're a god to me, and second of all, I want to know your secrets. Okay, cool. So let's talk about a bit more around. Um, so, w would you say that Oleg's post became what uh, you know? Want a better word? Shit posts. You know the post that, shit post. Yeah, you know we we know what a shit post is. You know, yeah. there's a, a, for those of you who don't know, there's a, a Twitter channel out there, which is LinkedIn shit posts, and um, it's basically all of the um, well, it's just someone who's subjective again. It's not they're not actually shit posts. I tried to look, tried to find myself on there because I'm, I'm probably I probably am on there somewhere, um, but it's just people who are moaning about people who get a lot of attention on their posts. 
So, you know, first of all, would you I'm say one Oleg's... Of those yeah, you are one of those people. So <laughs> would you say Oleg's post became shit post rather than value-added post? Because I remember there was a time when everyone was absolutely loving it and then it sort I, of I, took the whole tip to the scale yeah, I mean, where... I, I, think it, I think it's all about audience, you know? Like, I never... You know... Even even the Oleg posts weren't directed towards me. Mm. Sometimes I got a, a bit of value out of them. You know, I'd, I'd obviously like kind of scorn at them or whatever. Mm. But at the same time, you know, you, you know fair enough, whatever. Um, and loads of people did like it. Loads of people did get something from it. And and that's what it's about, really. It's, it's about all right, on this platform, the people I'm talking to, how do they like to be spoken to? What kind of things do they engage with? What kind mm. of things are they interested in? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> Our cameraman's just laughing. I think he's remembered what happened earlier on. I actually forgot this. I forgot until now until you reminded me, Dylan. But thanks. Um, but uh, anyway, carry on, Ian. What you were saying was um, great. Yeah. So you know, anything that you post. <laughs> what? What? I don't suck him out. <laughs> So this is, uh, look, let, let's not let the, the first show be based around that, but it was quite funny. It was great. Well, it was pretty. We <laughs> so anyway, no, I don't know. I thought we, got <laughs> we did, but it's fine. So yeah, carry on, because I, I think what you're saying is great. So any, anything that you create has to be fitted towards the platform um, and towards the people who are on that platform, what they kind of want to engage with. If you're posting, inter what you're posting interests them, mm. then, you know, fair game. It might not interest a slightly different chapter, um, of people, but <laughs> <coughs> yeah, what's wrong with that guy? I don't know, anyway. So, yeah, carry on. <laughs> um, that's it. I don't know. I think the edit's kind of fucked, doesn't it? No, not at all. Not at all. No, but this is we're going out live. This is actually going to keep going. There's not going to be any edits to this. This is actually everything is going to be included. Fantastic. Um, so right, so let's talk about that for a little bit actually because I think, um we look at LinkedIn, they I feel like, and again, I, I am absolutely biased because I'm competing against them, but I do love the platform too. Like, I actually love LinkedIn. It's been the source of all our business for, you know, well, it's been the source of my brand, basically. You know, I couldn't have built my brand in the B2B space without LinkedIn, and it would not have been able to happen. It would have been so difficult to do it on Instagram because it's too much noise, and I've got too much other things to compete with. It would have been so difficult on Twitter because, again, too much noise. Facebook, it just isn't a space for B2B unless you're doing paid ads. Authentic content, LinkedIn's done a – well, I suppose LinkedIn hasn't done a great job, but a lot of people started learning about how to game LinkedIn to write authentic content, which was the Oleg post. So what does the future hold for LinkedIn? Because I think it's in a really interesting space at the moment – blocking people who are or not blocking but I suppose you know quote unquote shadow banning people who are um, really successful on the platform you know the the amount of hostility that are on that's on the platform the um, I guess just how you can't really story tell unless it's a written post you know yeah I mean I, I think LinkedIn can do what they want at the minute because they don't have a serious competitor mm. that's a great point um, they are kind of just in this place where it's like, all right, we have complete domination of the market. <coughs> Sing. Who? Mm. <laughs> we have complete domination over the market. Um, you know, th there's no one pushing them. Mm. There's no one forcing them to innovate. Yeah. And having all these kind of like internal wrangles about that seemed really bureaucratic. Mm. I remember a couple of years ago, I was at a, um, a LinkedIn event talking to LinkedIn people and um, you know it was just it was just very clear that they were complacent yeah I agree I, 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 don't, I think I, it is I, I don't, don't want to fucking talk down LinkedIn because you know what LinkedIn has is the best thing that's out there so I think you, so. so you can't you know you, whatever fair play but at the same time they uh, recruit <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, so, uh, look, we this are coming. This isn't a plug. This isn't a plug at all. We, we're not trying to sell our services at all or trying to sell recruited our platform, but I think they, you're right. They haven't had a serious competitor, and I absolutely think that we are a serious competitor. And, by the way, this wasn't the uh, – for anyone who's listening to this, watching this, you know, this wasn't the plan. You know, we, we've we tried to make this as authentic as possible, but it does all lead back to, actually, there isn't a – there isn't a, a – a, uh, 
there isn't a relevant solution to the B2B market today or careers market that actually people want to use and that can use in the way that they are using other platforms. Until this happens, which is a couple of weeks, um, yeah, maybe LinkedIn will get a bit scared and maybe we'll, we'll have a good good time with them, you know, um, and be a competitor. Or maybe they'll just go, actually, we'll just stamp on you, we'll just release these features ourselves. Who knows? So, but, you Pick know... Facebook. But, yeah, exactly. But at the same time, you know, I do love LinkedIn. It's been very close to my heart, and I think that's why it's important that we, we talk about this. Thanks a lot, Ian, for doing this first show. I think it's been really good. Thank I've you, actually yeah. much better than I expected. You know, this is much like... This was a pilot for me, and... I think it's been much better than I expected. We only had to suck one guy off. <laughs> we only had to do one. <laughs> no, really good. So, look, like I said, there's no edits to this. It's just authentic content. And, you know, if you're triggered on by this, then, you know, I'm sorry. Just don't subscribe to the channel. But if you really, if you want to, you know, get content like this every week, real authentic content, talking about what's happening in professional world, tech world, you know, the stuff that was really fun, that's exciting to talk about. The next show we have is a gentleman called Adam and Adam, Adam and Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. <laughs> the next show we have is Adam Nagus, um, who is huge in the virtual reality and visual analytics space. I'm really excited to talk about to him because he's built this new product, which is a which is essentially a an amazing and probably the first ever I've seen in the talent acquisition space, the first ever platform that allows you to visualize where every candidate is rather than using an old talent acquisition um, system or an Excel spreadsheet, which I know most of you are using out there. So really excited to have Adam on. Um, subscribe to this channel with the podcast if you're listening on a podcast I don't know what the format is whether you just subscribe or whether you follow because we haven't distributed it yet we're going to find out our distribution network in the next hour um, but whatever you have to do to keep updated with what we're doing do that uh, thanks again for being on the show Ian um, Thank you. thanks for uh, to Dylan for sorting this out and, and yeah, such short notice and filming and, and make sure that everything's running smoothly um, but yeah, look forward to the next show. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.